PGD Attorneys of Law. So I'm still watching the show Cobra Kai, and I'm in season two. And uh, those of you who don't know, it's, it was on, I think, YouTube television, and now it's on Netflix, and it might be the best show I've ever seen. It's amazing. And so there's the scene in season two where Daniel LaRusso is rebuilding the Miyagi Dojo, all right? I, I know, I, for those of you who don't know, but if you haven't, go watch Karate Kid. So anyways, he's rebuilding it. And in the meantime, he also owns and runs a car dealership, a successful Audi dealership, with his wife. Okay, and there's this whole thing where essentially he's spending so much time on the dojo, he's neglecting the car dealership, and one of their key employees gets a job offer from one of their competitors, schedules a lunch with him to try and have them counter the job offer, and Daniel skips the lunch, and the guy ends up quitting. And I guess what really got me thinking is, why doesn't Daniel's partner, his wife, have the right to make authority, or the authority to make decisions on his behalf? So let's talk about this for a second. So they jointly own this company. Now a lot of this I'm inferring, obviously it's a TV show, and obviously you know I haven't seen the corporate documents, I'm not their lawyer, but husband and wife, they own a car dealership that they started while they were married. California is a community property state. They both act like they run the place. She seems like she's the boss most of the time, and he, you know, is also the boss. Uh, and I'll just use my business for an example. So my partner and I, I use the word partner incorrectly because it's actually, we're both shareholders of a law firm. And this law firm is a Florida corporation, it's a PA. So we're both shareholders, but colloquially I call him my partner. And we have a partnership agreement. And our partnership agreement, well, it's actually a shareholders agreement. What it says is that either of us has the authority to make most decisions. Either of us, all right, you following me? Now, in practice, we've never made a decision, an important decision anyways, without putting our heads together and being in agreement. Um, and then it says that certain big decisions need to have an actual vote or be unanimous, okay? So, big decisions, if I was, if I was your lawyer, I might say, okay, anything over $5,000, we need to have an agreement. Anything under $5,000, either of you can have the authority to do it. So, in this story, okay, going back to this TV show that I love, the guy's spending all his time on his new business, um, and he's not spending as much time in his old business, but his old business is being successfully run and managed by his wife. And so she's there and she's, you know, selling cars and doing deals and doing whatever you need to do to run a car dealership. And so this employee of theirs um, essentially wants to do a, a contract renegotiation. And when Daniel skips the lunch, it's, it's implied that then the guy got fed up and he left and he's not even going to entertain their offer. Now, what I didn't get when I'm watching this is I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why doesn't the wife have the authority, the partner have the authority to just make that decision for her? And frankly, if Daniel then came back and goes, hey, honey, how was work today? I was at the dojo all day. And she goes, oh, well, I renegotiated the salary of so-and-so. Um, he came to us with a counter offer and I told him that maybe it would be, you know, we would accept uh, in, in increasing his pay or raising his commissions or however car people get paid. And then he'd be, you know, imagine the three scenarios, right? He could either be like, okay, that's cool, thanks. He could maybe be like, all right, whatever, I don't care. Or he could get upset. And if he bothered to get upset, she could be like, A, I have the authority because I can run the place just as well as you can run the place. And B, what the heck are you talking about? You've been neglecting the business. I've been the one running the business. So I guess the point of the show is that then the guy quits and then they use this as this drama between the husband and wife slash business partners. And I just didn't think it was realistic. I think that if it was a real business partnership and they were really 50-50 and they were really husband and wife and it's a really community property state and they really are all in it together, that either one of them would have had authority to renegotiate that guy's salary, renegotiate that guy's pay arrangement, and that she could have handled that lunch without him. And I think that they made just, a, you know, it was a little bit of the Hollywood, right? They wanted to make a big deal about him not focusing on his other business. I, I, I guess that was the point. And then he sleeps on the couch for a couple episodes. Sorry if these are spoilers. It doesn't really ruin anything. The show's amazing. Um, so I guess the point is for you guys is if you have a partner and in your business. Now, by the way, again, partner. If you're in an LLC, you guys are called members. If you're in a corporation, you guys are called shareholders. If you're in a partnership, you're called partners. I use the word colloquially partner all the time. And so you're gonna have, or you should have, a written agreement, and you should decide which decisions you can make together and which decisions you are each authorized to make. If Oscar wants to take the company credit card and go spend $150 on office supplies, he doesn't need to give me a call, we don't need to have a board meeting, I don't need to sign a written authorization. I'm cool, I trust him, and likewise, I'm sure he trusts me to make the same decisions. So just think about that, guys. If you guys own your own business, get it in writing. Thank you.